great scourge of Africa. Many people will say to me, what is the most dangerous thing you face every day expecting me to talk of charging buffaloes, angry elephants, growling lions, or perhaps... You get the picture. I was trying to think of another thing for leopards to do, but my brain, unfortunately, was unable to work fast enough. None of those things, however, is as dangerous as what I'm going to show you now. There it is, everybody, a mosquito. The great scourge of the African continent, and the mosquito has been the cause of more death here than any other thing. It has also been the cause of, oh, we're going back to television in 40 seconds. Hang on a second. Let's just tell our audience, our TV audience about this first. Obviously, this is just, um, uh, just for me to practice, everyone. I hope you don't mind. Right, um, so we're going to go back to TV and then we'll get carry on with our discussion of the mosquito. I will just ready myself. My sideburns are looking a little wide, I feel. Hmm, might have to do something about that. Right, five seconds. Good morning and welcome back again to your live safari from the western fringes of the Great Kruger National Park where dawn has broken, a very cloudy dawn here. It feels like it's about 85 degrees Celsius, uh, f Fahrenheit, it feels like Celsius, but probably about 85 Fahrenheit. Very sticky morning. Jamie's on the hunt for leopards and lions, so is Taylor, and I have got here a mosquito. Now, this mosquito as I was saying, responsible for more deaths in Africa than any other animal, uh, possibly more than any, um, indirectly through malaria, more than any other cause of natural death at all. And still, to this day in 2017, it is a scourge. This particular one, however, is a house mosquito. It does not carry malaria. And this one I found in my room just before I came out to the tent today. And I found him and, well, about 10 or, 4, 10 or 20 thousand of his closest friends in my room during the course of the night last night. And I'm hoping for them a very painful death during the course of the day because it is, they are deeply unpleasant when you're trying to sleep, especially when it's steaming hot. Now, the way you identify this chap as a house mosquito is that striped abdomen. You can see there he's got a sort of stripy abdomen now and his posture. His posture is not, uh, well, he's kind of, when he bites, he bites at pretty much this angle. If you pretend that whatever he's standing on is to the right-hand side of the screen, he stands with his abdomen almost perpendicular, at least parallel to whatever he's trying to bite. So he'd come, or she actually, would come and sit on us and then have the abdomen parallel to the skin. Now, if it was an Anopheles mosquito, it would be at about a 45 degree angle and the back legs would be sticking up into the air. Now the interesting thing about the house mosquito, although it is not a carrier of malaria, it is a carrier of something called elephantitis. Now I don't know if you've ever seen anyone with elephantitis, but it's a dreadful disease which causes a swelling, I think largely, of the lower limbs and it makes your legs basically look like you're an elephant. Horrible, horrible disease. This can be the carrier. I don't think so much here. I've certainly never heard of anybody catching it out here. Anyway, that's this one. And then the other rather interesting thing about this mosquito that I've just read is that it can survive more than a season. So they can overwinter probably dormant. In this area, they actually just carry on going throughout the winter, but as larvae or as pupae or as adults. So that's quite interesting. They can get through the cold snaps by probably just going dormant. Of course, here, it never really gets cold enough for them to have to go dormant. They can just lurk about the place and stay active during the whole course of the winter. Isn't that quite interesting? Now, um, well, 